Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, rare World War II target drone to be displayed. Lightweight 160 horsepower electric LSA motor unveiled. And UAVionics announces Ping RID for remote ID. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen Program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Rare World War II target drone to be displayed. Nampa, Idaho Spirit of Flight Foundation Museum announced that a rare World War II-era Culver target drone has been donated to the museum's collection. Spirit of Flight Foundation President Gordon Page said, quote, We've had a Culver PQ-14 target drone on our wish list for years, but there aren't many left of the over 3,000 built, end quote. In 1940, the U.S. Army Air Corps requisitioned a radio-controlled target drone to aid in the training of anti-aircraft artillery gunners. Culver answered the call with the PQ-14, sometimes called the Turkey. First flown in 1946 and delivered to the USAAC training unit shortly thereafter, the PQ-14 was a radio-controlled contraption that could be flown by human pilots on cross-country ferry flights. The business of piloting the turkey was a crude one accomplished by dint of a rudimentary installed on the spot instrument panel and a seat consisting of a tub in which the aviator placed his parachute, then sat upon it for the duration of the flight. Disconcerting as such a concept may be to modern aerospace sensibilities, reverting the PQ-14 to radio control was accomplished by throwing a single simple lever. And after the break, General Atomics completes cold weather validation on Sky Guardian. Whether you're charting a steady course or pushing for the ceiling, Hartzell Propeller has been elevating flight for over 100 years. It's in our passion for engineering and research. It's in our dedication to testing the limits of performance and creating propellers that are as safe as they are sexy. Now, together with our dedicated family of companies, we're propelling the future of aviation. We are Hartzell Propeller, built on honor. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate, or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our Next Gen Minute. General Atomics completes cold weather validation on Sky Guardian. General Atomics evaluated the cold weather readiness of its MQ-9B Sky Guardian remotely piloted aircraft system while they enjoyed the winter weather, publishing news of their successful tests at the end of February. As part of an effort to appeal to prospective Nordic customers, General Atomics brought a Sky Guardian into minus 21 degrees Celsius, minus 5 degree Fahrenheit weather and allowed it to sit for 12 hours, ensuring temperature stability before beginning the preflight. Successful Vertia test flight yields interest. AMSL, an Australian eVTOL company, has seen increased interest following its February test flight of the all-electric Vertia. The multi-rotor aircraft is slated to have a range in the neighborhood of 155 statute miles and a cruise speed up to 161 knots in its first battery-powered form. AMSL plans to release a hydrogen-powered iteration of the Vertia. The operator plans to begin Vertia operations sometime in 2026, with a one-pilot four-passenger layout in the standard model and a cargo version with a 1,102-pound payload. Coast Guard abandoned search for mystery aerial object. On March 2, 2023, the Coast Guard offered details pertaining to its efforts to recover the remnants of the F-16 downed Lake Huron balloon. The service reported that it had deployed vessels ranging from heavy icebreakers to airplanes, the crews of which spent nearly 60 hours looking for the object, albeit unsuccessfully. Over a three-day time frame, the Coast Guard conducted 23 discrete searches covering 4,000 square miles of northern Lake Huron. USCG searchers were assisted by personnel and vessels of the Canadian Coast Guard and Royal Mounted Police. USAF's Task Force 99 conducts first operation. The U.S. Air Force's Task Force 99 is a showcase unit to which Pentagon officials refer to as, quote, a model of how to make the most of existing resources in the Middle East, end quote. 
Expressed less floridly, Task Force 99 is a tactically understated means by which to assert American presence in the Middle East without engaging in open hostilities. U.S. Air Force's Central reported in February 2023 that Task Force 99 had concluded its first operational experiment, a successful test using small drones for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance purposes. That was our next gen minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Lightweight 160 horsepower electric LSA motor unveiled. Australian developer Kite Magnetics announced the completion of their 120 kilowatt electric propulsion unit, a small self contained alternative to traditional light sport engines. Their model sports a well chosen power output, about 160 horsepower, compared to current LSA fare. Unlike the average small engine, however, their system, the KM120, tips the scales at a fraction of the mass of comparable engines. The KM120's exact weight hasn't yet been confirmed, likely because development is still ongoing, but the size appears easily portable for a single man. Kite says the foundation of the motor is the company's aeroperm magnetic material, developed by the team that began the startup. Right now, they're targeting airworthiness under Australia's Civil Aviation Safety Authority for the LSA category, which will be followed by the requisite switch to FAA and EASA approval. The company has yet to announce their exact flight testing partner for the KM120, only hinting that they will begin building operational data over the coming year once they do. The plant is well suited to nearly any lightweight fixed-wing aircraft, with mounting points similar to existing engines and compatibility with most commercial propeller designs. And after these messages, UAVionics announces Ping RID for remote ID. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, factory connected. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit flyskyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Welcome back. UAVionics announces Ping RID for remote ID. Uncrewed aircraft manufacturer UAVionics unveiled another solution to FAA remote ID requirements, the Ping RID. The unit is a compact, lightweight, easily affixed transmitter that provides a simple, effective method to meet Part 89 remote ID standards. The Ping RID comes pre-configured and ready to use out of the box, only requiring the assignment of a drone's aircraft identification number and a single attachment before flight. The unit is battery-powered, recharged via USB-C. The release comes with months to spare before the final rule on remote ID becomes effective on September 16, 2023. Once active, it will require a drone to be equipped with standard remote ID or a remote ID broadcast module like the Ping RID in order to fly within a federally recognized identification area. Paul Beard, UAVionics CEO and Academy of Model Aeronautics Hall of Famer, said, quote, The remote ID rule is a key part of the FAA's commitment to safely integrate uncrewed aircraft into the national airspace system, and UAVionics is pleased to apply its avionics experience by delivering a product that meets the FAA's requirements without sacrificing the drone operator's time or aircraft performance. A license plate for your drone needn't be complex or require an application to run, and with Ping RID you simply charge, attach, and fly. It's that easy." End quote. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching!